Welcome back. And this is Dr. Tom. I am a board certified addiction specialist and board certified in family medicine. And I practiced for over 30 years in emergency rooms and addiction treatment centers in Southwest Virginia and in East Tennessee. I am also a person in long-term recovery from opiate use disorder and substance use disorder and have been in program for over 21 years. So today we're going to talk about an interesting topic, and that is the use of marijuana by adolescents and how marijuana affects the adolescent brain. Recent science and research has shown that the human brain continues to develop and grow and create new neural networks up to the age of 25. There's also evidence that neural networks can be created at even older ages. I just saw an incredible study. They took a bunch of 90-year-old guys who were working or who were living in a nursing home, and they did functional MRI studies on their brains to see how their brains worked. They then taught them how to play bridge, you know, the card game, bridge. They then repeated the study three months later. Those 90-year-old brains had developed new neural networks and new neural pathways. So the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, is just not true, because you can. But back to the adolescent brain. So let's talk about what's going on inside of a developing brain. Once again, between your ears, you got three and a half pounds of goo, you got 150 billion neurons talking to each other through seven different connections with one trillion synapses, and the synapses communicating with each other with a thousand different neurochemicals, about which we understand a little bit, maybe of 20 of them, like dopamine and epinephrine and serotonin, but we don't really know what's going on inside a human brain. So here you have this human brain trying to develop based on the genetics. And inside the human brain, you have a load of cannabinoid receptors. You got CB1 receptors all throughout the brain. They're critically important in a developing brain in helping keep a human being calm. So if you're an adolescent and you're smoking marijuana, that THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, is going in and filling up those cannabinoid receptors. Well, when the cannabinoid receptors are filled, they send a signal back to the cannabinoid factory saying, hey, guess what? We don't need to make any more of these chemicals because the receptors are already filled with chemicals. Well, pretty soon you start shutting down those factories. Pretty soon your brain starts rewiring itself and saying, well, if we're going to have all this exterior extraneous outside tetrahydrocannabinol flowing into our brain, we don't have to make a cannabinoid system. And it adversely, literally adversely affects the structure and the development of the adolescent brain. So there are five things that it does specifically to the adolescent brain. Number one, and this should be evident to anyone who's ever smoked marijuana in high school, it adversely affects academic performance. Like who knew, right? Yahtzee. You smoke weed, your grades go down. They also go down because you're having an adverse effect on memory and processing speeds. You can't process things quite so quickly, which is why you should never, ever smoke marijuana and drive a vehicle. Now, I never advocate for the use of any mind-altering substance. I'm a true believer that the brain has everything it needs to function normally and that we shouldn't add anything else to the brain. And remember, anything that affects the brain is a drug. So there are certain things you can do that are beneficial to your brain. You can eat healthy, you can exercise, you can get out in the sun. Did you know that sunlight is a drug? Music is a drug. Be careful what drugs you ingest. So it also has a negative effect on short-term memory. You can't remember what happened five minutes ago. It also has an effect on short-term memory. You can't remember what happened five minutes ago. Wait a minute, did I just say that? There's also been evidence that it has actual detrimental effects on myelination in the brain and on synaptic pruning. Now, what's that mean? Let me explain it to you. 
Inside your brain, each neuron has a coding on it. The coding helps the neuron function properly. That coding is called myelin, M-Y-E-L-I-N. Now, if you have problems with myelination, you have definite problems inside your brain. For example, there's a lot of diseases that involve demyelination, like multiple sclerosis and Lou Gehrig's disease. And these can be really devastating. So if the marijuana is actually causing issues with demyelination, that's going to cause a structural problem inside the brain. So anything that affects the brain is a drug. My recommendation is that you allow your brain to grow and develop normally without adding any extra chemicals to it. So adolescents should not be utilizing marijuana, CBD, CBG, Delta-8, Delta-9. Do yourself a favor. Let your brain grow and develop normally without additional chemicals. Thanks for joining us. This is Dr. Tom. If you like this content, please hit like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, share, and check out the suggested videos if you would on the way out. Thanks again.